Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a bay window. One of the first things I notice is that I look at my units. So we know that when we come to our dimensions, we're going to have to adjust that. Also, when we're creating our drawings. We also have a detail view over here. And you can see that it's incredibly large compared to the actual sizes of my bay windows that are located inside of the main drawing. So that also tells me that I'm going to have to make another dimension style to somehow accommodate this. Okay, so the first thing let's go ahead and do is go ahead and adjust our units and switch them to architectural. Remember that if you don't have this, it's the customize three bars here to the side. And then you're going to put a check next to units. Let's go ahead and adjust it. And now let's go ahead and create our bay windows. There is really no size for how long those legs are that are going down. So I'll start here. Let's make sure that this line is vertical. You can see I'm going down at a distance and AutoCAD is kind of giving me a preview. So I'm going to zoom out and make sure that I'm plenty long. And you can see those bay windows are 3 feet by 3 feet. Or 3 and a half by 3 and a half. But I'm going to come down and I'm going to make sure that I have enough room here. So I'm just going to type in 10 feet. And it seems like AutoCAD is kind of stuck on the zoom. I'll just hit escape. Double click your middle mouse wheel or you can select zoom extents. Now I'll start my line command back. I'll go this direction. And now I can do a little bit of math in my head here. I have 3.5 and another 3.5 equals 7. And then I have a 5 feet in the middle. So let's make this 12 feet. And then we'll go back up, let's say, 8 feet. Let's go ahead and put the chamfers on each of these ends. So I'll use the chamfer command. Distance, 3 feet 6. It's going to be the same for the other one, so just hit enter. And you do have multiple, so select the multiple option. And select the two lines where you want that chamfer to appear. Next thing I'll do is join these together. So I'll select them. And use join. Offset. You can see the thickness of this is 6 inches. So 6. Now I'll offset this to the inside. Make sure that you're on the inside of it. Let's start creating our bay windows. I'll start with a rectangle. And the coordinates for that will be 4 feet, comma, 6. Let's draw a couple of lines. Going right across the midpoints. And once again, I'm having multiple of these, so I'm going to go ahead and create it and make it a block. So let's go ahead and go to the insert and go to create block. I'm just going to name it window. Next, I'll pick my base point. And I'm going to select this bottom end point. Select the objects. Once you're done, make sure you hit enter. I got a preview of what I'm going to have. And let's go ahead and select OK. This is going to allow me to copy now this window from this midpoint. And I'm going to place them at this midpoint, this midpoint, this one. And I'll place one at this endpoint or intersection for now. We can use rotate, select this object, 
The base point is at the midpoint that you selected. And this one is going clockwise, so it's 45. Rotate this one. The base point is going to be at this end point. And this one is going, I'm sorry, the last one is going counterclockwise. This one is going clockwise, so I'm going to type in negative 45. Let's move this one up a height of 5 feet. Then I'm going to rotate it. Once again, from this midpoint, and it's going clockwise, so it's a negative 90. You can see that I now don't see the extensions of my lines here. There's two ways we can do this. We can either extend them up or we can stretch them. Let's use the stretch command. So I'm going to stretch and I'm going to put a window crossing all of this. Hold down the shift button and deselect my window. Enter. Select the base point and then we can come up a distance of let's go 36 inches. So what we're going to do now is just kind of put the little squigglies that are on the end of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a spline command. I usually use the spline fit. So I'll just make a, a little spline going up and down over this. The trick to this is make sure that you have your ortho turned off. In this case, I'm also going to turn my old snaps off. I'll click here click here and then click here. Now remember with the spline command do not hit escape after you're in the, at the end of the line. So hit the enter button. Do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to use a spline fit. Click here, go up, down, click and then hit the enter button. Let's go ahead and trim this off. So trim. Let's trim these portions off. And do the same on this side. Okay, so everything is in position. Let's go ahead and insert in our title block. And I'll use the classic insert command. Let's choose Browse. And then I'll select the A size one for this example. Make sure nothing is checked. Hit OK. And this is an architectural drawing, so we're going to refer and see which architectural scales that we're going to be adjusting and using. So, so in here, this is going to be the first ones here. And then these are going to be the scales that we're going to use. So I'm going to start off with 12. And then I'll work my way either up or down from that. Okay, so select your title block. Right click, choose properties. And the scale X and scale Y. I'll make them both 12. You can see that indeed I am short. So let's go with 32. And this may give us enough room to complete our drawing. Let's go ahead and move our the things that we drew earlier on the inside of our title block. So I'll move this into here. Okay, so with the title block in and the scale is at 32. Let's adjust our line type scales. Set the value to 32. And now you see that our line types will appear. In this one, we don't have any center lines, so we're not having to worry about the center layer or the center extensions. Let's go ahead and look at our dimension style. To adjust our dimension style, let's choose the drop down here. 
and then choose dimension style. Let's go ahead and modify this one. And the lines on this one, we're going to keep everything the same. Symbols and arrows, we're going to change our arrowheads to the architectural tick. We're going to have, we don't really have any circles or center marks on this one, so you can leave this one set to mark or none in this case. We'll adjust the text height to make it an eighth of an inch. So I'm just typing in 0.125. This text is not aligned, so we're going to keep it going horizontal. And to the fit tab, this is where I have to adjust to my scale factor, which is 32. Primary units, I want them to display architectural units. And in this case, I want to suppress my trailing zero. So I'm going to leave this box checked. Let's go to OK and close. I'll switch over to annotate and then I'll adjust my dimension style override. So this just makes sure that all my dimensions are put on the correct layer. Now let's start creating our dimensions. So I'll start with a linear dimension. Goes from this endpoint. Let's turn our O snaps back on to this endpoint. Come down and place the dimension. Choose continue. Select this endpoint. Then to this endpoint. Do another linear dimension. And instead of selecting two endpoints, I'll hit the enter button and then I'll select this line. Go ahead and place that dimension this way. Choose continue. And I'll come up and place at the endpoint or midpoint or intersection of this one. Now, if yours is selecting this bottom line, remember that you can always use the select option. Select this line and then go to that midpoint. For our detail of our window, we need to scale this up, so I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to Home. I have it selected first, and this is one of those noun verb things. Sometimes you can select some objects first and then invoke the command, and then it's going to bypass the Select Objects option, or you can do it the opposite direction. So I have it selected. Select Scale. It's looking for a base point. Select my base point on my object. And now i got to figure out how big I want to make this thing. So let's see what two times will make it. So I just scaled it up twice as big. I'll move this up to here. Next, let's go ahead and put our linear dimensions on. So I'll put a linear dimension from here to here and place this dimension and also do a linear dimension from here to here. Now a lot of times you, you'll see people that will override these dimensions and that's really not a good thing to do. The correct way to do this is I go to a dimension style. I'll have this one highlighted. Select New. It's going to copy from that standard one, and I'm just going to give it a name, 2x. Choose Continue. And now underneath my primary units, the scale factor is what I have to adjust. So these are reading twice as big. It's usually going to be the reciprocal of whatever you scaled it up. So I scaled my detail up by 2, so that'll make this scale factor 0.5 or 1 divided by 2. Select OK and then close. I'll select both of these dimensions. Come over in the property window, look for dimension style, select the drop down and put it on 2x. Now you'll see these dimensions will adjust. Okay so let's go ahead and fill in our title block. So I'll select the title block in the properties window underneath the project, I'll name this one just simply Bay Window. 
and the scale of this one is going to be 3 8 inches equal 1 foot 0 inches. Okay, make sure that you do fill in the name and in the name column. And I think this is about all we need to do for this one. Okay, so in this one, just to recap, we had to make sure that we created a dimension scale or a dim scale to adjust to our detail view. We learned about doing some squigglies now, or splines in this case. And we also took a look at some other ways of doing dimensioning. Alright, so I think that's all for this one, and I want to thank you for watching.